Hello and welcome to another Stamp with Amy K Facebook Live. And today I'm going to show you a card that I made with the Daisy Garden stamp set, which is one of the new background images in the Stampin' Up! annual catalog that just started last week, Tuesday. So this is a really pretty stamp set. Um, like I said, hopefully you can see it. I know there's kind of a glare on the case and um, with the, the lights trying to show the video, or show you what I'm doing in the video. Um, I know that there, there's a bit of a glare on it. So this is the stamp set. It is really, really pretty. It's a background stamp, so it's all one stamp. It's, it's not pieces. It's just one large image, and it's the background image. And um, so that's what I used in the background of my card, and I'm going to show you how I made that today. Hey, Bree, I see that she's here, and Brenda, and Susan, and Pam, and Elise, and uh, hopefully I'm in Debbie. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing a bunch of people or not. All of a sudden a whole bunch of comments just came flying through. So, <laughs> so, uh, and Rosie's here as well. So thanks so much for joining today. I appreciate you being here. Um, so again, this is the, what we're going to be, oh, and Joy is here and Sheila. Hey, thanks for hopping in. So this is what we're going to be playing with today is the background, uh, stamp. And I love it. It's so pretty. <laughs> it's one of my favorite ones from the catalog. So, um, hey, Julie. So let me set that aside for a second. A couple of other things that I used on this card. These are the Brilliant Wings dies. It's a huge die set, which um, this one's been available for a little while, but it's in the current catalog. Hey, Jerry, thanks for joining, and Marilyn and Susan as well. So um, so it's in the current catalog. This is one the one that we were able to order early. Um, I used a couple of the dies, this one and this one in particular, uh, from this die set, and these are the intricate butterflies. Um, again, those are the Brilliant Wings dies. And then the sentiment, is actually, hey Mary, I, I love the daisies too. So the sentiment is actually from the Friends Are Like Seashell stamp set and I used the birthday sentiment from there. So um, that's all that I used from that stamp set. But I did actually use, you may not recognize it, it looks a little different when you chop it up, but this is actually from the Sand and Sea Designer Series paper. That's where the background came from. So it's super simple and so pretty. And there's one of the pages in there has the yellows and the pinks and I think there's blue down towards the bottom. And so I think Either way, you know, whether you use the top of it or the bottom of it or however you want to use it, I think it would be perfect for this and you could make a whole bunch of them. So thanks, Nancy. I appreciate that. Hey, Karen, thanks for joining and Jeanette as well. A couple things before we get going. Uh, Stampin' Up! has a Join Plus promotion going on right now. So if you're not a demonstrator but you're interested in joining, now is a really, really, really good time. There's always a good time, but this is a really good time to join. You get, actually get $155 worth of Stampin' Up! merchandise in your starter kit. You only pay $99 plus tax, and it ships for free. Um, so you get to pick the $155 worth of whatever you might like for merchandise, and um, there's no requirement to sell to anyone other than yourself. Um, so if you are interested in only getting the discount for yourself, you can certainly join. Um, if you are interested in running a business, um, you can certainly join too. So however you want to do it, that's the nice thing about Stampin' Up! is they let you kind of do what you want to do with it. So Oh, thanks, Pam. I appreciate that. So let me know if you have questions on that. Um, that joining special runs through the end of May, but don't wait till the last second because, you know, computer stuff always goes crazy at the end. So, <laughs> so try. If you're interested or have questions, definitely let me know. I'd be happy to talk with you more about it. Um, and then Stampin' Up! also has their Connect, Craft, and Collect host promotion going on right now. So this is a really good deal too. <laughs> so if you are a, interested in placing a larger order, hey Heidi, thanks for joining. So if you're interested in placing a larger order, um, $250 or greater, you're actually going to get 25 additional Stampin' Rewards in your order. Um, so that's a nice little bonus. So basically at a $250 order, you're getting double Stampin' Rewards, which is awesome. Good, good deal. Um, and then um, if you're interested in hosting a party or in doing um, trying to collect orders from friends, let me know and I can help you out with um, doing an online party type thing, um, giving you a host code and seeing if you could collect the $250 and um, get some extra host cash for yourself. So again, let me know if you have questions. The details are posted on my blog about that. And then the last thing, I'm offering double running shoe re reward points through the end of the day today. And I did it for the first week of the catalog, so that ends today. So make sure that you are getting out and getting your orders placed, and you'll get double reward points for every order of $50 or greater that you place with me. So let me know if you have questions about any of that stuff. Again, it's all posted out on my blog, so feel free to uh, let me know if you have questions or you know pop over to my blog, which is stampwithamyk.com. All right, so, whoops, I almost did it upside down. So let's get going on the card. Um, you will note that this is significantly larger than my final piece. When I'm using a large background image and the Stamparatus in particular, I find it much easier to oversize the piece of paper than to cut it too small and then have it 
not stamp where I want it to. So you can always trim the paper down, not so much on adding to it. So that's why I tend to start, this is actually four and a quarter wide and it's about six inches long and we're gonna trim quite a bit of the bottom of it off and a bit off the sides on it. So again, this is from the Sand and Sea Designer Series paper, which is in the mini catalog. And I've got my Stamparatus set up with the Daisy Garden stamp on it already. And I just basically set it up so that it was as far into the corner as I could get it. And then I'm going to open that up. And I know it looks like it's coming right at you on the screen. Sorry. <laughs> and then I'm going to put my paper in here. And the reason that I placed the stamp kind of up in the corner is because I wanted to be able to slide my paper up into the corner. And um, so that I can um, easily slide it back into the corner should I need to restamp anything. So I've got Sahara Sand ink and I'm gonna ink the daisy image. And I know this will probably shake the screen a little bit and I apologize on that. It's kind of hard to do it um, and not have it wiggle the screen just a little bit. So, so I'm trying to, trying to be gentle and lift it a little bit off my desk so that hopefully it's not gonna make you seasick when you're watching it. Uh, but again, just got Sahara Sand ink and I wanna make sure that I got the image covered really well. And again, just gonna tuck it up here into the corner and press down, kind of give it a good press all over the place. Uh, and then we'll lift it up here in a second once I've kind of given it a good press. All right, that's definitely way lighter than I want it to be. And some of these areas didn't stamp very well because apparently I don't know whether I didn't ink them well or, or um, you know, whatever, I didn't press down hard enough on it. So I'm going to re-ink this. Again, that's the bonus of the Stamparatus and that's why I love it for the background stamps because I often end up with images that look just like that and I don't love that look. Um, so I'm gonna slide that up into the corner here again and got it on my Stamparatus here. And again, it should be stamping it, hopefully all in the same place. And again, it's soft suede ink that I'm using on it. Uh, yeah, it is one of those things that you have to try it a few times just to make sure that it's going to not work, <laughs> Karen, um, by cutting the paper too small and then you're sad later. So, all right, we're getting there. I don't know. I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm not pressing as I'm talking, but <laughs> I'm having a little trouble uh, getting my, I'm probably just not paying attention to where I'm putting the ink is probably the issue. So, all right, so I'm going to try one more time here and see if I can get this fully stamped. And I'm just going to give it a good hard smoosh down here and uh, see what we get. And if we still don't get it, again, that's the one bonus of the Stamparatus is we can just keep stamping it. So, all right, that is going to be good enough, I think, because this part's going to be covered. That flower doesn't look awesome, but like I said, it's we're going to be um, covering that up with butterflies and sentiments, so nobody's going to see it anyway. Okay, so let me take this out of here and get the Stamparatus up and out of the way. And then I'm going to bring in my Stampin' Trimmer, and um, I want the final piece to be cut to three and three quarters wide by five inches tall. So that is what, you know, that's where I want it to end up at. So I know that five inches tall because I don't want to cut much off the top. Actually, I don't want to cut anything off the top. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just line it up at five inches and chop off the bottom. So that part's going to be done. And then the sides, I'm gonna kinda, you know, again, I need to make sure that I've got three and three quarters here, so I wanna make sure that I, <laughs> I'm not cutting too much off one side or the other. I'm just gonna move it probably a little bit in. I'm gonna trim off this side a little bit and then flip it over and trim off this side just a little bit. I may go actually a little bit further and just get the three and three quarters cut off that side. All right. Sorry, hopefully that didn't uh, totally <laughs> totally just freeze us. Um, I just got a phone call, of course, in the middle of this. So I think we're still live. I think we're still good. Um, let me know. Hopefully I'm not frozen. So um, put your shirt over the heel of your hand and rub it. Oh, that would work if I actually didn't have a camera in front of me and didn't have the table wiggling. I would put a lot more pressure on it, but I was afraid that it would make the table all go crazy. So, all right. Um, but yeah, thanks for that tip, Debbie. I appreciate that. So, okay. So we're going to use a little stamp and seal to adhere this to the card front. And the card front is just a thick, basic white card base that I have cut to five and a half by eight and a half and scored at four and a quarter. Um, my original card I actually made as a top fold card. So this one's four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half, but it works just the same either way. So I just had this type of card base sitting here. So this is the one that I used and I'm just gonna line this up and hopefully get it to be centered here. 
All right, got that put down. Um, then I have another little piece of the Sand and Sea Designer Series paper. And um, this one is cut to about three eighths of an inch by about um, three and three quarters inches. And I'm gonna run a little stamp and seal across the card front. And I don't need to be super, super careful about the stamp and seal. Um, normally I put it on the back of the little strip, but since it's so narrow, my driving with the stamp and seal is not, <laughs> not always perfect. Um, so I figured I'd put it on the card front and because I'm going to be putting ribbon right over the top of it and then another sentiment on top of that, I wasn't too worried about um, having the seal kind of peek out the top here a little bit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put another little strip of stamp, stamp and seal across the card front. And then I have got some of the really pretty, it's a 3 8 inch fine art ribbon is what it's called. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it on my card front and kind of get an approximate size that I need and give it a little chop here. So you do definitely need to uh, get this stamp set. It's really pretty, <laughs> really, really pretty. It's one of those that I, when I saw it in the catalog, I'm like, oh yeah, that one, that one's definitely coming to my house. So sometimes the background stamps I don't always love, but this one I do. So, all right, I've got a little piece of the ribbon and Hopefully, if I can get my fingers to work and cooperate, we will stick that on the card front, um, right over the top of the little piece of designer paper that I've already got there. I'm gonna set this aside for one second and grab another little piece of basic white cardstock. And this one I have cut to three quarters of an inch by about three and three quarters. Um, I'm gonna be trimming this one down at a little bit of an angle, so I'm not gonna worry too much about sizing on it. So um, I have got some Melon Mambo ink that I'm gonna be inking this up with, which I kind of forgot that Melon Mambo was one of the colors in that designer paper pack until I pulled it out and was like, oh, that's the color ink I'm gonna be using because I was trying to decide which color I wanted to use on it and I decided Melon Mambo it would be, so. All right, and again, the sentiment is from the uh, Friends Are Like Seashells stamp set. So I've got that on here and I intentionally stamped it a little bit closer to the left knowing that I'm gonna be trimming off a little bit from the right hand side. And then I'm gonna pull my trimmer back in. And, oh, thanks, Linda, I appreciate that. I'm gonna pull my trimmer back in and I wanted this one cut at a little bit of an angle. Again, there's no special way that I'm doing this, no special measurement or anything like that. I'm just kind of trying to get it so that it looks about even. Run it through my trimmer here and then I've got a little angled sentiment on it. So let me get that up and out of the way. And then we're gonna use a couple Stampin' Dimensionals to adhere this to the card front. Uh, I am going to be careful with the Stampin' Dimensionals and make sure that I put them up towards the top of my little piece of um, cardstock here just because I have the ribbon underneath and I don't want to put a dimensional over the top of it on the sentiment banner and then have it have like a, whoop, that one's probably a little too close to the top. There we go. That's better. Um, then have it uh, sitting over the top of my ribbon and have it give it a weird lump. So that was kind of why I do it the way I did it. And then I'm gonna put this right here over the top, kind of layer it right over the top of the ribbon and hope to get everything on there fairly straight. Um, the last, well, a couple of more things I need to add. I need to add my butterflies. These are cut from basic white cardstock. And again, they're cut with a brilliant wings dies. I just picked two of the random butterflies that I liked. And if you look in the catalog on, I can't remember what page the stamp set is on, um, but you may see a card that um, you will probably recognize as the inspiration for mine. <laughs> they used a little different designer paper than I did. And um, they actually, theirs was a little bit um, smaller. They did a um, square card as opposed to a full size A2 card like I'm doing here. So again, these are cut from basic white cardstock and I'm just using glue dots, uh, sticking them kind of under the center of the butterflies and tucking them under the sentiment, hopefully. And I think I'm gonna move this one over just a little. There we go. We will call that one good. Last thing to finish up the card front is I've got some opal rounds and I'm actually gonna take two of those. So one of the larger ones and put it here above the flower or above the sentiment in one of the smaller ones and put it here next to the sentiment. And I haven't stuck them down thoroughly yet because sometimes I do like that and realize, oh, I want that up a little higher or down a little lower. Um, so that's usually how I put them on is I kind of lay them on the paper and then wiggle them around and then do this 
and smoosh them down. So, all right, so that is it for the card front, super easy. And again, I just love that this designer paper worked perfectly, in my opinion, <laughs> for what it's worth, um, with that stamped image. So, all right, the next thing is the inside of the card, and this is just basic white card stock that I've got cut to four by five and a quarter, at least hopefully that's what I have it cut to. Yep, that's what it's showing me here. And I'm gonna use the just the edge of the daisy stamp to stamp the edge of the cardstock. So if I can find my ink pad, oh, there it is. Um, I've got soft uh, Sahara sand, I almost said soft suede. That's not the right color. And I'm gonna ink up, um, and I, I don't necessarily have to be super careful about inking up the full image. I just wanna have at least half of it done so that I can get it stamped, hopefully decent. Um, pretty nice, I don't know, decently, I guess I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> So, and I'm going to stamp it here, and this time I'm going to give it a good hard smoosh and hope that um, I get everything stamped all in one swing on this so I don't have to try to redo it. Yep, and that one worked okay. So, um, so yeah, I think that's what I was doing wrong in the first one is I was not smashing down nearly, nearly hard enough. <laughs> so that's why it took me a couple tries of re-inking to get that done. And, you know, I probably should close up my ink pad before... I stick my fingers of the card in it. Okay, so that is it for the inside of the card, is just do a little stamping with the daisies on the edge of it. Add a little stamp and seal to stick it to the inside of the card base, and we are gonna be all done with the card for today. All right, um, all the details are gonna be posted out on my blog tomorrow for this card, which is stampwithamyk.com, so feel free to hop out there and take a peek. Um, if you wanna know measurements or you know, find links to any of the products that I used to make it, I will also share the link to the direct blog post in the description of this video on Facebook and on YouTube as soon as the um, post goes live, which will be about eight o'clock tomorrow morning, so Eastern time that is. So, um, so that's it. Super simple. I hope that you like the card and so glad that you all joined me today. I appreciate you being here. Uh, have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday. I will plan to be live on, on uh, YouTube on Friday around 2 o'clock Eastern Time. And then on Saturday, we take off for the Stampin' Up! Maui trip, which, oh, it's here. <laughs> and I'm excited about it. So I will be out of town for the next two weeks, so I won't be going live then, but I will plan to be live uh, when we get back uh, in early June. Actually, we get back on the 28th, so it'll probably be like June, well, maybe the end of May. I think we still have... I think it'll be the 31st or so. But I'll plan to be back on my regular schedule on Tuesdays and Fridays around 2 o'clock Eastern time um, going live once we get back. So thank you all so much for joining. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and we will chat soon.